to block the kicker to beat inside of him. He's got the speed. He's going to go all the way. Pressure comes. They get to him. He's down back at the 22-yard line. He's got it open. Five. Touchdown, Kellen Clemens. Oregon football with Mike Bellotti. Well, the snap was high, but he gets it. Looks, looks, and looks. Goes way down for the end zone. It is caught at the two and diving down. That's good. Place good. The kick is up. It's going to be scored. It's not good. And Oregon has won it. How about that? A very typical Oregon football win at Stanford that far and the victory probably shouldn't have got to that we'll talk about that later coach but congratulations a great victory on the road again at stanford coming from behind in the fourth quarter thanks joe and we haven't done that a lot you know in the history of that thing it's uh, usually turned out the other way that's more like a ucla type situation actually but it's nice to get a road victory nice to win on the road uh, stay in second place within striking distance of first place. I thought our defense played an exceptional football game. Ten sacks on the day. Uh, Hello Tinata, again, is, is just rounding into uh, just awesome player. And I say that because he's come into his own. I think he feels confident. He's playing with great confidence in terms of his, his legs and his just everything he's doing. Uh, Kellen Clemens, again, played a very efficient football game. Terrence Whitehead, huge amount of yards and uh, both uh, receiving and running with the football and just a lot of grit in that team uh, it rained the entire second half the kids didn't let it bother them uh, Stanford went ahead in the fourth quarter we came back did what we needed to do and having done that at Washington State you know that was a few weeks ago but does it matter I mean that team believed they were gonna win it, it does matter and I think again the Washington State game made a significant difference to us it changed the way we practice changed the way we focus changed our confidence in ourselves the kids are just playing uh, with the belief that they're going to win, and that's what we've had for many, many years, and we've got to keep it going. And Stanford's a good football team. Yeah. People should yeah. know they're going to beat some teams this year. That's a tremendous win on the road. we got some great highlights. Let's get right to it. First quarter, Oregon and the Stanford Cardinal. Now, Coach, it makes you appreciate Austin Stadium so much when you go into a stadium like this. So quiet. It's so quiet, and that's the smallest crowd I think I've ever played in front of in a Pac-10 game. And, and uh, Stanford's got to do something about that. A little rain came out, so the Californians and... You know, maybe at Stanford it's a little different, but still, very small crowd. About 5,000 Duck fans, though. You get off to a good start here, and then uh, back to the air on first down. With a step back to throw. Straight drop, pressure comes. Don throws it downfield. It is hot and pushed out of bounds. Nice touch on this pass by Kellen Clemens. Reads a two-deep coverage. Marcus Maxwell gets in the hole or the dead area near the sideline. Kellen puts a perfect touch over the underneath defender. Right there, just beats the safety. Marcus, nice concentration right on the sideline. To the 43-yard line, and then Terrence Whitehead starts what's going to be a monster day. The 43 of Stanford. Rosario in motion to the I-back spot. Now across it, and then the handoff. That is outside Whitehead, 40, inside 35, pulling 30 inside of the 28-yard line, and the 27 boys finally down. Nice job again. Uh, the scheme here is awesome. I think Andy has done a nice job again with the play calling. Terrence sees the hole, bounces. This play is designed to actually go up inside. All the holes inside where he bounces it out. Gets a block there by Marcus Maxwell. And again, keeps going, drags a, a potential tackler for three or four more yards. Coach, are you guys doing anything different at the beginning of games as far as scripting of plays? Because your drives the last three games to start the games have been very good and very efficient. We have openers for every game. And again, depending on the situation, it varies. Here, unfortunately, we trip ourselves and don't get a, a key third and one, so have to settle for the field goal. Still a real good drive, though, to start the game. It was nine plays and 61 yards, and you break the ice, Jared Siegel gets on. This is about when the rain started coming down as well, so... Hey, you settled for three there, but still, it's a good drive to start the game. Yeah, it's nice always to get points on the board the first drive. Edwards to McCullum for four yards here on this play, and uh, they sure had a tough time running the football with any consistency. J.R. Lemon, nothing right here. Yeah, great job by the interior line. So Chris Solomona gets him down eventually, but it's a huge wall there of ducks. Combination of a coverage sack and a pressure again. Four man rush. We just collapse that pocket. Again, you can see it just there's no place to go. The, the quarterback gets swallowed up. I think Solomone gets credited with the sack right there. So the uh, Cardinal get all the way pushed back there, and uh, Ducks start with it. Go right to work again with Terrence Whitehead. And Clemens back in on the delay, hands it to him, and he's going to go right straight up the middle. A huge hole, still his feet to the 30. Outside of the 35, hesitate at the 40, looking for blockers. Cuts it back up across the 45, now to the 47. Good job by Terrence again. 
Great line blocking up front. You can see again, this breaks perfectly straight ahead, right up the middle, get a full head of steam, cut back on the safety right there, and then off to the races. And again, right here, I would have said just trust your speed. He does a nice job. He sees he's got a couple blockers coming up from the right, tries to cut back behind him. Just too many Stanford Cardinals. A gain of 27 to the 47, and then uh, going back to the air, and Terrence Whitehead doing a lot through the air as well as Kellen goes back. And a little dump out here and does a nice job picking up nine yards. Yeah, great job. He, Karen's had trouble with his footing all day long. It was slick, grass, we don't play on grass that long, that long, really. But it was just difficult. Washington for two at a first down. Different grass, too. Kind of a Bermuda. It was very slippery before the game. Whitehead for 11 more, running hard. This is what we've seen all, all year long. Yeah, great yards after contact and again, great blocking to allow him to get started going up the field. So another real efficient drive down to the 26-yard line. But uh, Whitehead with a big one here as he gets it outside and they get the holding. And... Uh, Tough you know, call. I, yeah. Tim Day did a great job, blocked the guy all the way down the field, took him to the ground. I never saw any speed you know, again, just uh, one of those things. But nice job on the option, good execution by Kellen and Terrence. You see yeah. right there. Yeah, and again, uh, again, he's just blocking him. That's uh, His hands are inside. Tough angle. Tough, uh, tough break there for the Ducks because it backs you up, so you go to the air on third and long now. So what looked like it might be a touchdown drive, Demetrius can't quite bring it in, and so Jared Siegel has to come back in to try a field goal. This one's a long one, 50 yards, just beyond 50 as you can see, and this one just a little bit short, wet out there, and uh, right there, real close. Yeah, he just had it offline. I think it was going to be long enough. It's a heavy air day, wet, and the balls were getting heavier as the game progressed. They go back to the run, Kenneth Tolan for eight yards, and uh, then the defense is bringing the pressure. Probably saw this a lot because uh, their quarterbacks have been on the run all year, but Haloti just goes right through his man. Haloti beat the, the lineman at the line of scrimmage, then beat the back, drove him back into the quarterback, and again, he gets ahead of steam, you can't stop it. Then Anthony Trucks. Coming from the backside, great job, nice combination of pressures, both with the backers and the line. Hey, Coach, that ball on all these sacks was hanging out there, all looked like a blimp in his hand, and it just never would come out. No, we, we couldn't get it. You know, we're taught to try to strip that ball as we come in. You see Anthony try to go over the top to get that ball. We work on that drill every day with our linebackers and D-line. So that's the first quarter of their total offense. You ready for this? 12 plays, 6 yards. Can't do much better than that. You had 116. Clear at this point, I thought up in the booth who the better team was. So did I. The problem was it didn't reflect as much on the scoreboard as it needed to. I always talk about this yards don't mean a thing. Uh, it's points and getting in the end zone, and we needed to do a better job. But I was very pleased about the way we started the game. All right, coming up, Ducks continue to go by threes, but you got to get down there somehow. So some big plays eventually carry the day. Tim Day as Oregon football with Mike Pilati rolls on. Coming up right after this. Welcome back, everyone. Oregon football with Mike Bellotti after a big victory on the road against Stanford. Let's go right into the second quarter at uh, Stanford Stadium. The rain's starting to come down a little bit. Everybody getting a little bit wet. You see a good contingent of Duck fans. They were the only ones that made any noise. Great job by our fans. Uh, just great support on the road. This drive starts after a 19-yard punt by David Dittman, coach. So they start the possession at the 34-yard line, a very short field. That's when the uh, quarterback went down, though. Yeah, a bad punt, gave them great field position. A big hit here by Robbie Valenzuela, and again, uh, knocked the quarterback out. They come with a big draw play here. Luckily, we barely make this tackle to save a touchdown. Lemon for 11 yards, their best run of the day. They go back to it, and this time, Haloti. Yeah, Haloti again. Uh, was on the offside, but he just found his way to make sure he got there. Go to look at it, Coach. Uh, Haloti just the last three weeks just seems like he's dominating the, the defensive line. Again, it's a, it's a combination of confidence and, and his conditioning and also just an attitude about he knows he can do more. He's doing it now. So they go to the uh, field goal attempt. And it goes up, and it's good from 28, and we are tied at three in this football game. See, I feel pretty good about that. Well, yeah, I mean, it was a great stop by the defense. Anytime you get the ball way down deep and you force them to kick a field goal, keep them out, I think that's a momentum shift in your favor. And you, your team had a hard time getting good field position in the first half. Started the 20, 20, 20, 17, and 20, your first five possessions. Yeah, and then and this, then this crazy play. <laughs> Yeah, this is tough. This is a good 
throw into the zone. Uh, I actually think the ball may have been down. I think he hit the ground. That's what bounced it up. But Marcus tries to make a catch, pops it up to himself two, two or three times. You can see it here again from ground angle. We're throwing again. There are two deep. We're throwing over the top into that whole area. Again, right, right there. Bounces and hits the ground right there. Comes up off the ground. He taps it again, taps it again, up into the air. Unfortunately, right to their defender. Should have been ruled dead. No, no play. So instead it goes uh, from a trapped ball almost to an interception and another short field. Yeah. The second straight short field starting inside the 40. And uh, T.C. Ostrander comes in. And uh, Coach, I thought, again, this is one of the biggest defensive series of the day. They get nothing out of it. Absolutely. Start with a little slant pass, gain about six or eight yards. But our defense just stiffened did a great job. Back here, they looking around. Ostrander looking, looking, looking. And he ends up throwing kind of a dangerous ball into the end zone. And then they're going to have to kick it. And they don't get it. The uh, field goal attempt goes up. And uh, he made 10 in a row and missed that one. So that was a big miss right there. Two possessions inside the 35, three points. Huge stop. Huge job by the defense. Again, even though they broke contain, we had great coverage down the field. So the Ducks start with it, and Clemens gets sacked. There was a little period in here. They were getting to Kellen. Yeah, they did a good job there. We just we did not protect the inside very well. Kellen protected the football. Did a nice job. Here we hit Marcus Maxwell for about 14 yards. That was a big play. It was third and 15, got 16, just one and none. Good, thank you. I, I'm <laughs> glad of that again. We, we needed that because, again, they had put some pressure on us, got us in the whole big play to come back out of it. Kellen, nice job stepping up. Marcus, nice adjustment in his route, and then again gets that couple yards. It's a good smack there, but keeps on going. But at this point, a little bit like golf. You, know, you hit a good shot, and then you follow it up with something that's not so good. It was a holding penalty, so a good play, but then a holding yeah. penalty makes it tough on the drive. Second and 21, you get 14 here, but... You know, you're in such a hole after the holding penalty. Yeah, it's very difficult. And again, uh, it, tough play here. They come with a blitz. We have to dump it off inside and don't get enough yards. Williams gets five on third and seven. So Oregon has to punt. And then they go uh, to the air. Alex Smith, who's a great tight end, 16 yards here on the play as uh, Ramon Reed chases him down and throws him out of bounds. But here come the Ducks again after the freshman quarterback. Second down to nine for Ostrand, the redshirt freshman. Cardinal quarterback under center and back off the plate, fake the throw, rolling right, pressure comes down, back at the 22, Robbie Valenzuela. Great job by Robbie, this is a bootleg, showing stretch one way, coming back the other direction away, Robbie splits the inside tackles, comes there, DC's trying to get rid of the ball, you see it out there, I thought he was going to throw it. He, hang on, he hung on to it and, and controlled that football, but great play by Robbie. Yeah, they played pretty good, they had no turnovers. Yeah. Just a couple of penalties. They almost played a perfect game, still weren't able to win the game. So for your team to hold up to that was really uh, really something. Third and 21, they just run it so they can punt. Ducks get it back at the 29. Tim Day gets involved. Three minutes left in the half. Here comes the blitz, the quarter blitz. They pick it up, steps up, wants to throw. Got a man open. That day is first down to the 50. Outside of the 40 and inside of the 39-yard line. What to set this up is great protection. Again, they're running a type of a zone blitz, bringing some of the outside. Our line takes care of it. Our back takes care of it. You see uh, Nick Stite steps out and takes the blitzing back from the outside. Gives Kellen a lot of time to step up. Kim, a lot of time to beat the coverage in. Off to the races down the middle of the field. It's a gain of 32 yards. It goes down to the Stanford 39-yard line. And then uh, Clemens is going to go back to Day. This one, uh, one of the very few overthrows that Kellen's had in the last three weeks. Yeah, dangerous throw here. Just, again, that down-the-seam type throw. has got to turn over a little bit quicker. Second down and 10. Whitehead on the draw for three yards. There was a false start penalty, so it makes it third and 12. Pick up seven here, so that penalty turns out to be pretty big. It was, uh, though, again, nice job. We didn't quite get that screen set up the way we wanted, but Terrence made some positive yards with it. So Jared Siegel, you call on him a 51-yard attempt with... 45 to go in the half. 41, right hash mark. Siegel's got the leg or has in the pass. Good snap, good place. Kicks on the way. It is long enough, and he got it! A 51-yarder for Jared Siegel, and he is pumped up. Well, I was very pleased for Jared, very pleased for us. We needed that shot in the arm, that momentum. Uh, he had plenty of distance on the 50-yarder, just pushed a little bit right. There was no wind going at this point. That's still a, a big kick in a in a cold, wet day. The ball doesn't travel as far, but he makes it pretty easily, right on. Nice job by the 
uh, kicking team. You showed a lot of confidence, Coach, for you to take him back out there for 51, and uh, not only just for this one, but for the future, too. Well, I think so. He's a, he's a very good kicker. He's been the best kicker in the history of the school, and I think, again, to get him on track, give him a little confidence, and give our team confidence mm -hmm. he can do that will be important down the road. And, heck, you get the lead with it as well, the 6-3 lead at halftime, a defensive battle. Can you believe it against Stanford as we go to the half? And when we return, a very special homecoming for Oregon safety J.D. Nelson, his father, Darren Nelson, starred at Stanford and in the NFL, now works for the Stanford administration. Imagine that family's emotional state on Saturday. That and more coming up at the half on Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti. Welcome back to Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti. I'm Michael Burke. Now, certainly Oregon is no stranger to national recognition. And a few weeks ago, when Oregon traveled to Oklahoma, we showed you the guys from Sports Illustrated documenting every move the Ducks made on that trip. A writer and a photographer were granted an all-access pass to Oregon's practices, meetings, airplanes, and even the police escorts the Ducks get on the road. And this week, that access paid off for Oregon on the cover of Sports Illustrated on campus. An SI magazine that's distributed in student newspapers at just about every university around the country. Adam Snyder is the cover boy, and inside is a detailed minute-by-minute -minute account of what an Oregon road trip is like. Clearly showing that for the Ducks, it's first class all the way for these student athletes. And you can look for Sports Illustrated on campus inserted in the Oregon Daily Emerald. Now, growing up in the shadows of Stanford Stadium while his father was starring in the National Football League, Oregon safety J.D. Nelson had Stanford blood running through his veins, and still does to a certain extent. Nelson's father, Darren, is an associate athletics director at Stanford after his days as a Stanford football star and an NFL career, mostly with the Minnesota Vikings. So you can imagine the emotions of the entire Nelson family Saturday at Stanford Stadium, where Darren was pleased with his team's effort, but disappointed with the loss, while at the same time happy for his son and the way he played against the Cardinals. Hard to imagine being in that situation, but after it was all over, all that really mattered was some time with the family, a walk home, and a proud papa. I don't, this is a tough game for me, you know, because I'm having played at Stanford and I work here now, and uh, you know, and, and JD was raised right down the road, and you know, seeing him come back and play is always a thrill for me. I don't have to travel anywhere. I was down in uh, down down at your guys' place last week, but. Uh, it's, it's fun to watch it. It really is. And I try to take all the emotion out of it because that's tough for me with them playing Stanford. But, you know, I'm always going to cheer for my kids and uh, I'm always going to do that. Everybody around here knows that. So they don't give me too much of a hard time. Now, the senior Nelson had a chance to come to Autzen a week ago to see J.D. play against Arizona and hopes to be able to catch another duck game as the season winds down. Now, one place we'd like to see him play is in a bowl game. And the win puts Oregon in position now to make a bowl run. And with just four games to go, so many possibilities. So we ask you, which bowl game will the Ducks go to? The Rose Bowl? That would require two SC losses, an ASU loss, and the Ducks winning all of their remaining games. The Holiday Bowl, still a possibility, especially if Cal and SC go to the BCS games. The Sun Bowl repeat, the Insight Bowl in Phoenix, the Las Vegas Bowl, or how about the new and improved Emerald Nut Bowl? That, of course, used to be the San Francisco Bowl. Go to chambersports.com to place your vote, and you can also get there by going to the website of our flagship station, kezi.com, click on sports or OSN, and place your vote. All right, when we come back, it's back to the action in the third quarter, and Terrence Whitehead continues his breakout season. How about eight receptions to go along with his big day on the ground, making a bid to be the Pac-10 Player of the Week. Joe and the coach with that and more when Oregon football with Mike Pilati returns right after this. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Oregon football with Mike Pilate having a good time here on a nice Sunday after being in the rain for four hours at Stanford, which you wouldn't expect, but what a fun day. And three in a row, it's just, you know, when the winning starts happening, it's just so much fun to be around. I know your kids are really jumping into that, too. Well, victories on the road are, are premium and key in the Pac-10, and certainly we've got a couple that have been uh, difficult games right down the wire. Defense forced a punt to start the third quarter, so Oregon goes back to it. Whitehead had nine, then he gets ten more right here. Terrence touched the ball half the times that your offense ran plays. That shows you his value to our offense. He's just doing a great job of getting vertical push, linemen getting started, and again, he's get, he's making yards after contact every time. Duck set up the screen here, and it's a loss of three. They had it sniffed out pretty well, so David Dittman has to come in and punt, and uh, 
trying to pin him deep here. Sends it out there for 28 yards, but it's still it's inside the 20, so now they've got a little bad field position. Yeah, better than a touchback. Again, it's, it's not exactly what we wanted, but inside the 20 is a positive development. Again, that's negative field position for them. Rain starts to come down, reminiscent of some Civil War times, and uh, they go right to work through the air. I thought their quarterback, Ostrander, played very well, Coach. He did. True for a redshirt freshman, excuse me, did a nice job. We miss a tackle here, let them get a big play to get out of that deep hole. 18-yard gain there. McCullum back to throw here, and they'll pick up another 19 yards and a great catch. Nice so, catch. Good concentration across the middle. Quarterback stepped up into the pocket with Rush in his face, too. This time, though, the Ducks bring the pressure, and uh, Matt Toyina and Devin Long get to him, and more pressure is coming towards the Cardinal. Back to throw, straight drop. Pressure comes, and he is hit, and he'll drop back at the 26-yard line. Robbie Valenzuela. Great job by A.J. Tuatelli coming off the edge. He actually drives the running back back. You see him coming from the left of our screen here. Runs right through. The great push right there. Gets a little bit of a hand just to stop him, and then Robbie can catch him from the backside, take him to the ground. So that made a lot of difference in this game because they have to go to kick it, and this time, Scroy is going to be good from 43 yards out. And uh, a nice kick right down the pipes there and tied at six. Oregon back with the football now and then uh, going to go back to the tight end coach. At this point, six, six. Time, this game went so fast, I, it just the game was over like that. Yeah, it just seemed like uh, there were completed passes or running the football. We do a little screen to Tim Day. Can't quite get started there again. The, the footing was, was slippery and we were a little tentative running the ball. Third and five, a big one coming. Left-hand side and back to throw the ball. Pressure comes. Here's the draw. Wide up the grab. First down. 50, 45 on his feet. 40. Outside of the 35. Still on his feet. He may score. He's in the 20. It'll be a foot race to 10 and out of bounds. Great job. This is what we call a hot situation. They bring two backers. Kellen, great job of dumping it off to Terrence underneath. And then he just goes to work. You can see him here looking through, picking his holes, running through some tackles. Give me another one right up here coming. Two guys, breaks him, splits him. You can't tackle him at that at the waist. You got to get him down low. He's running through. Got a little bit tired, I think, at this point because he's been carrying the load so long. Hey, that's a great play. Great play. <laughs> just a great play. Great vision, great strength, speed, the whole thing. 51 yards on the pickup. Eight catches, 90 yards for Terrence. Now at the 10, lose a couple of yards on the on an option, then incomplete on the shovel pass. So uh, now it's third and goal, and uh, not able to get it into the end zone here. No, nice choice here. They covered our deep guys. We tried to get something going. Had to settle for the field goal attempt. So Jared Siegel comes in. Do you think about maybe going for it at this point or not? No, I didn't. I thought, again, the game, because of the way the weather was going, the three points in the lead was going to be important to us. Didn't realize it might be the winning margin, but felt like, again, rather than take chances we're down there, let's get some sure points. Yeah, three points in this defensive battle, like ten in any other game. I mean, it was really big, and he puts it right through. So Jared Siegel gives you the lead with 3.16 to go. It's 9-6, to six, playing by threes. And uh, they come back, Coach, and uh, they're doing a pretty good job. But, hey, how about Justin Finnessy against the run? Nice job by Justin right there again. I'm not sure what the play design was. Their back went the other way, but they had his own block, and they're going to, he just comes off the outside edge, does a great job, uh, makes the back try to juke, and he takes him to the ground. So second 12 coming up, and they go back to the air. Ostrander is going to go back to throw right here and uh, 24 yards on the pickup. As you can see, he did it for a freshman who hadn't played. He's confident he delivers the ball. Nice job. And again, we, we need to work on our underneath zone coverage. It's a little frustrating because they got some throws just like these two. Again, a big tight end, big receivers going down the middle. Uh, it's something we need to work on in the future. That was a third and 10, 17 yards on that play. They have one rushing yard in the entire game. Look at that crowd Stanford brought to the game. They have one rushing yard at that point in the game. So they're one-dimensional, you Absolutely. know that, and your defense holds them to six points in three quarters. They weren't trying to run the ball. We had, again, stopped that, but the sacks are even negated any type of run that they did. They had an 11-yard run, a 9-yard run. That was the biggest thing they had all day. And you're dominating in all the stats right now except one, a big one, and that's third-down conversions. Stanford's able to get some, and they'll get the lead in this game. A blood pressure rising fourth quarter. Back and forth we go. Both teams with a chance to win this one, and a fourth and three that took some serious guts. Oregon football with Mike Blotti. Going to finish it up right after this. Welcome back, everyone. That place is going to be packed for the Huskies this coming week, but we got one more quarter to get through before we move on to the big rivalry game 
And uh, coach, you got to quit doing this to us all. I mean, we're all you know, blood pressure and all that stuff. The you see these gray hair, Joe? Yeah, I just got to do it to myself. I was going to say, I'm right, doing... that play right there also gave me another. We got our hands on the football about three times in that quarter and could not hang on to it. Great that, defensive plays. Though. And that was really one of the traits of this drive is this, this may not have even happened had you been able to make a couple of plays here. But they get it down inside the five yard line and uh, the rain's coming down and they get a big, they run the ball here, but then they get a touchdown and take the lead for the first time of the day. Yeah, that was a great. Great catch by Alex Smith over there, set it up at about the three-yard line. We get good pressure here. We just lose a guy in coverage, and they get the go-ahead score. Danny Heath for the touchdown. Stanford has their first lead at 13-9, to 9, 13.40 to go. The uh, capacity crowd uh, goes crazy. And then the response drive, Coach. Clemens to Whitehead for 11 yards. Nice job again on the uh, completion. Good job by Kellen. Whitehead this time going to take it for a tough yard up the middle. And then after an incompletion, sets up a big third and nine at the 42. On the shotgun snap, here's Clemens to throw. A lot of time, a lot of time, a lot of time. Now we'll put it out underneath and run. And he'll get a first down and now go down at the Stanford 45-yard line as he takes it up the field. They were playing what we call a drop coverage, three deep, five under, only rushing three. So you see here, our, our line does a great job. They're only having to block three guys, but there's nobody open down the field as they have a maximum drop coverage. So Kellen, after a long time, realizes it, drop, pulls it down, tucks it, runs it for the first down. Great job by him, good vision of scrambling, get down, protect the football. You could have had a pizza delivered in the amount of time. And eaten it, too. I mean, that was really, and then he made a nice cut to get the first down. So that was a big third and nine conversion. Clemens to Keith Allen for seven on first down. And then two straight incompletions, one to Williams, another one to Colvin. And uh, all of a sudden, fourth and three, all guts right here. Fourth and three. Clemens in the shotgun, 11 6 to go, high snap, looking for the touchdown, Keith Allen has it down to the two-yard line! This was actually a, a hitch play, a double hitch on the outside, it's only about a six to eight yard route, they come up in corner roll, so Keith goes right by, takes on the safety, Kellen sees it, on, it's on the same page. Great catch. I think he was so worried about catching the football, he just could have kept his feet ran in the end zone, but wanted to make sure of the catch. Another look at it, Coach, and uh, the ball is kind of fluttered up there. Their safety stopped on the ball. Just misjudged that yeah, thing. Yeah, he, he misjudged it. He was playing it, and again, we had another vertical scene going inside him. It might have frozen for a second, but uh, we're, we're very fortunate right there. Out of the odd. Turns, handed to Whitehead. Going left, inside the 2-1. Touchdown! Oregon scores the touchdown! Nice job, nice job running by Terrence to see the hole. Good job by our offside guard. Again, you see him pulling right there. Gets a piece right there. That nice job by uh, Dante Rosario uh, and Ryan Lofton also. Couple of things, big response. Only let him lead for three minutes of the entire game. Nine plays, 70 yards. Two third and long conversions and a fourth down conversion. I think the response, what you just said, is the most important. Thing. With the weather, again, you're never, con you're always worried about the ball and handling it, but the response immediately next drive score, I think, was huge. Now trying to close the door on it. Incomplete there. Almost had another pick there. And then incomplete. A couple of chances out here. The ball's coming out to some ducks. Yeah, that one, that one was a tough one. And again, Aaron knows. I mean, Aaron is our best ball hawk out there, and that was that was difficult, but he played a very good football game. Defense held. Oregon gets it back, now trying to chew the clock up. Shovel pass to Terrence Whitehead for seven yards. And I'm going to just keep going to him because he's the, he's the guy. Yeah, and again, we're varying up. Nice patience right there. Let the blocking develop. Get the first down yards up the field. And then on first down, four more yards for Terrence Whitehead. A little delay, picks his way, and the clock's just tick-tock, tick-tock going away in this game right now. Yeah, we're doing a nice job of mixing the run and the pass. Get a little, uh, couple of yards there, step out of bounds, get the first down. Nice job by Dimitri. That was a nine-yard pickup on second and six. Now it's first down at the 43. Clock's ticking away, and they just rip one out here. I thought his progress was stopped, but yeah, it, that's it, the way it goes. It's, it's not the call nowadays. You've got to make sure you hand the ball to the official, and that's very frustrating. And uh, for everybody involved, again, we get about a three- or four-yard gain right here, jump up in the piles, actually fighting. And again, they will not stop the whistle now. They just rip it out. And again, he's not down. He's standing up. So again, we just have to be more efficient in terms of protecting the football. Coach, is that an awesome stand for the defense? Because here you are, you got the lead, they get the turnover, they have the short field, and here comes the defense. That's a bad break, you get a penalty, but still. 
Yeah, it's tough uh, no matter how you do it. If the guy's helmet comes off, they're probably going to call that. And again, Pelotti just coming through making a play. You see him come from the outside of the screen here and then just reaches underneath, but just really a sort of a blow that he didn't grab it, but just uh, <laughs> slammed it. But again, our defense said, Terrence, we've got your back. It was awesome. It's backwards time. Now they're going backwards. There's pressure. AJ Tuatelli there for the loss. Still in field goal range. Even here, Coach, so he's still got to move him back even further. Yeah, absolutely. Again, great job by AJ coming off that backside. You see, they're all coming. Uh, there's Halote. There's Ramon. It's the groove. Think about how important three points would have been in this football game, and then think about this play. Three receivers, two left, one to the right. Stanford eight for 16. Back to throw the ball. Pressure comes. He's hit, and he gets pulled down back at the 44-yard line. So now they have to punt. Absolutely. Those are, those are huge plays again. And Moan Reed, this is a blitz the back kind of deal. We come in, he sees who picks up who, and he comes free. Does a great job of getting him down. That's a tremendous job by the defense after the 15 yard penalty, push him back out of field goal range. So now they have to punt the football, and so you have a pretty good chance to uh, run out the clock. This was, this was a close play. This one kind of had you. You know, the heart jump a little bit, but they said it went in the end zone, crossed the plane and go on. Yeah, all it has to do is, is cross the plane. It's not anything where the person is, just the ball itself. And again, thank goodness for that. I always worry when they talk about it rather than going with their first instinct. But it comes out to the 20, and chance to run out the clock to Whitehead for nine. And then uh, second and one, guess who? He's going to get the ball. Second and one, 29. We'll get the snap, we'll go back and hand it off. Whitehead goes left, big hole, 30 outside of the 40, cuts it inside of the 45 and down to the 46-yard line. Great running by Terrence Whitehead, but great blocking up front. This is sort of a wham play. You can see a, uh, Dante Rosario hits the big nose guard. We seal the end. Nice block on the outside by our wide receiver, and then Terrence just off to the races. And then you bring in some fresh legs. You go to Ryan Shaw for some uh, hard inside running. Talk about that, Coach. Yeah, he did a great job. Ryan's been practicing better and better, and again, he's a smart back here. He, oh, it's almost re reminiscent of Maurice Morris a couple of years ago. I don't think he, he thought he was down, and he wasn't. He was on the guy and kept going. Shaw for five more here to the 36, and uh, this really forces them to start using their timeouts here because the clock is ticking away. Third and two, and uh, Whitehead can just pick up a yard. Uh, excuse me, that's still Shaw for five more. Uh, now Stanford uses their timeouts. Third and two, this is where Whitehead picks up just a yard. Fourth and one coming up, Coach, and the big call here. Yeah, well, I, again, we needed to do it. We needed to make them use their timeouts. I felt like we could get it. Uh, we slip and fall down. The two guys at point of attack don't make the play, but Terrence is going vertical so well with enough momentum to get that first down. So Whitehead for three yards. It keeps the clock running. They are now out of timeouts, under about 2.50 on the clock. Whitehead for six yards. And again, he slipped. He'd have made eight, six or eight more, unfortunately. Then on third and six, Terrence gets five yards, but it's bad luck here because the play ends with 40 seconds on the clock, and they measure that, which means that they stop the clock. You lose the time that you would have been unpiling it, which could have been 10 to 15 seconds. Yeah, absolutely. Although, again, they start the clock again afterwards. But here, this play, pressure me. We, we had about a foot to go and, and missed it by an inch. Should have got better push up front. So they get the 16 seconds. Basically, if he would have been got two yards on third down, game would have been over now. But yeah. because they had to measure, they get some time and they get a couple of plays, coach. And now it's nervous time. Yeah, they do a nice job. Get the ball out of bounds here. This is an interesting play. I saw it. Again, this guy, the receiver here, catches the ball, does not step out, flicks the ball back to our guy, J.D. Nelson, who catches the ball inbounds. But evidently, they marked him out, so they get a chance to try a 49-yard field goal. So here we go, down to one second left, 49 yards, ascended to overtime, made 11 of his last 12 kicks. Wait for the snap, 49-yard try. Snap good, place good, the kick is up. It's going to be short. It's not good, and Oregon has won it. How about that? Well, that was much relief. The worst case scenario is going to be overtime. The best case scenario, we win. And, and again, I felt pretty good about that distance at that time of the game. Ball's gotten a little bit heavier. It was wetter. It had been raining all second half. And again, great kick online, just not quite long enough. About a yard short, and the Ducks get the victory. Wow. Another trademark Duck win. 16-13 to 13 is the final score. As you can see, the Ducks pretty excited about their third straight Pac-10 win. We're, we're coming together and we're, we're still improving, which is good. Um, you know, it, it's, it's interesting to say that we're still improving at week seven, but uh, we are. We've got a lot of uh, potential we haven't tapped into yet, so we're, we're excited to see how we can finish this thing out.
it is a new life and then we, we just taking it one game at a time and just trying to uh trying to get some wins and make some play we, we, we got we got people that's starting to step up and make plays and that was the difference early on people who wasn't making no play and now guys are stepping up and it's working out for us well it means a lot because you know we battled the whole game offense and defense and uh when uh someone messed up we the other the other team stepped up and uh, picked their game up and uh, gave the other, you know, other team a chance. And that's what I feel we did today. You know, we trusted each other and we just played with each other the whole game. We said after the ASU game we wanted to get this thing rolling in the, in the right direction and that's what we've done with three straight wins. So we can't ask for no more of us. Just win everyone we get a chance to play this week. It's so, it's, it's so much fun. Um, you know, I think we are an offensive team, but, you know, when the offense really is not doing it good, I, I know our defense will be here to back them up. And so... I'm just excited to win. We had a great week of practice, and uh, from there on, we worked on a little thing, our technique and stuff like mm -hmm. that, and we knew this was a big game for us, and, um, you know, this, this will even out everything, break all the ties, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll move forward after this. And uh, having a great win like this, you know, it all comes from hard work. You know, I knew you'd have to execute, like, a, a wonderful kick. Uh, I mean, the balls weren't traveling that well today, and uh, that's the outer range of anyone's leg, and he's a great kicker and had been able to contribute all season long, put it online, and just, uh, I have to see it on film, but it didn't, didn't miss by much. And doesn't matter if it misses by that much or by 10 feet. I mean, it's still 16 to 13 and second place in the Pac-10. You're right, and it's a, it's a huge road win. We talked about it. We want to stay within striking distance of first place. Not interested in second place, but it's also anytime you win on the road, it's a great deal in the Pac-10 uh, against a good Stanford team in the rain that we, you don't usually play in it. So, again, uh, but it's sort of water under the bridge right now. we got Washington coming mm -hmm. to town, a huge rivalry, huge game for us in terms of what we want to do. Now, I know you're a little more even keel than me yeah, or any of the other fans that are out there because uh, the Huskies are coming to town and that will make your blood boil but this Washington team well they're coming to town and really in a state they haven't been in before they are assured of their first losing season in a third of a century Huskies are reeling can the Ducks make them pay even more when they come to Austin we'll talk about that and get this thing going on Oregon football with Mike Bellotti Welcome back to the show, everyone, and here we go. The Huskies coming to town. Maybe a score or two to settle with this one. They were lambasted by the Trojans in Los Angeles. They are 1-6 and six now. They are assured of their first losing season since the mid-'70s. This is a different Husky team than we've seen in a while. It is. They're struggling a little bit right now, but, again, they've played very well against us for two years, so I'm not sure. Again, uh, they're a little bit unsettled at the quarterback position. Isaiah Stanback is a great athlete. Uh, who can run the football and presents a lot of problems for you. It'll be interesting to see what they do with the quarterback situation this week because they have pause, but uh, they scored zero points in the 38-0 loss against the Trojans, so we'll have to see what happens there. We know there's not a lot of love here. It's turned into not just the best rivalry in the Northwest, but maybe the best non-traditional rivalry in the conference. We talked about that and the fact that the last two years have been marred by some chippy stuff with Husky head coach Keith Gilbertson. It's a really good game. It's a good rivalry. I, I told Bill Moose... Uh, the day after the game, we don't have a place big enough to play it anymore. We need a we need a coliseum or a Rose Bowl to play it in. But um, it's it's a good game. I, I think I think some of it's gotten a little out of hand, and I wish it hadn't. So we'll do our part just to make sure that it stays, you know, within the boundaries of sanity. But it's an awfully good game. It's highly contested. But it has been for a long time. You know, I grew up around. Washington football. The Oregon game was a big game in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. So, so it's not new that it's a highly contested, uh, heated contest. Boy, that, uh, this is going to be a fun week. Getting ready for the Huskies. It's a great week. Again, we're at home in another Pac-10 game. And we'll talk as the week goes on about emotions and keeping them in check and all that. But the rivalry game, the Huskies come to town. And when we come back, well, Robbie Valenzuela is going to try and get that Husky backfield. And right now, nobody's doing it any better than Robbie. That coming up after this on Oregon Football with Mike Pilato. Welcome back, everyone. Robbie Valenzuela has been quietly getting the job done since the 2001 season. He even played in that Fiesta Bowl game against Colorado. And while Igor Olshansky, Haloti Nada, and Devin Long seem to have gotten most of the attention, Robbie now has something way more important than any sack or any tackle on his resume. He's become a father. Nicola Beta has more now. Run stopper Robbie Valenzuela has been a bit of a forgotten man in the Oregon rotation the last few seasons. But this year, the senior defensive tackle has been leaving Oregon fans 
with just fleeting memories of Igor Olshansky and Junior Siavi as Autzen Stadium is now calling his name. But his biggest fan hasn't even spoken her first word. Robbie and his girlfriend Deborah Graves are the proud parents of four-week-old Emma. Born three weeks early on September 24th, the eve of Oregon's first win of the season. She weighed in at eight pounds, one ounce, and measured 20 inches long. Yet, Robbie admits she's dished out the biggest hit he's ever absorbed. I don't think it's really hit me the fullest yet. You know, I haven't really had time to sit down and, you know, my thoughts and, you know, I see her every night and she lays with me and that's the only time I get to see her, really, after practice, I get home during the night. Trying to find time for football, school, and now fatherhood can be a little overwhelming. And while he does feel some extra pressure, he's enjoying his new role and has added incentive to provide for his family. It makes me more responsible and, I don't know, it just makes me want to succeed in life now that I got a child and it just makes me want to give him my best at everything. And every time he affectionately looks down at his little... Sound, uh, they said it was a girl and uh, I kind of wasn't buying it at first and uh, so then after the second one, they said it's still a girl and I still wasn't convinced so uh, and finally I guess after the third one, uh, they said this is going to be a girl and I just, you know, I, I wanted a boy but, you know, you know, she's just as good as a boy, happy she came out healthy. While Robbie is fearless in his three-point stance, he's taking it day by day when it comes to tackling those dirty diapers. He was close yesterday. But close? Yeah. She ended up going number two and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yesterday was probably my first day I've ever been that close to taking the diaper off and I looked and... <laughs> okay, so he'll have to work his way up to the changing table. But if Emma is anything like her dad, or old man, which his teammates and coach like to call him, she'll be a letter winner in no time at all. For Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti, I'm Nicole Lubeda. First of all, I don't blame him. Second of all, he's done a great job all the way back to the Fiesta Bowl year. He has. Robbie's been, played great football for us for a long time. He's having his best year, but certainly with his young daughter, probably his greatest challenge. Huskies coming up this week. It's going to be right here on this station, 4 o'clock on TV. We'll see you on the Monday night show. We'll have some fun with the Huskies on that. You do not want to miss that after the Monday night game. For the coach, I'm Joe Johnsante. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time on Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti.